Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're test driving the 2021 Honda Odyssey Elite. It's been refreshed, it's been updated, some new features have been added, and so I'm gonna show it to you inside and out. We're gonna take a test drive, and I'm gonna tell you what I really think. For 2021, Honda updated the looks of the Odyssey just slightly, and you can first see that right at the face. There's a redesigned grille and a lower bumper fascia that give it a slightly more contemporary look that's more in line with some of the newest Honda designs that you're going to see in the showroom. And what they've done is given it some new finishes, including gloss black on the plastic, new LED headlights, which just have a different look than before. They work very good at night, I have found. And as you go around the corner, there's a new 19-inch wheel on the Elite Series that we've got here, machine face and a dark painted center. Now, this particular model, being the Elite, prices in at just under $50,000, and in that way has just about everything that you can get on the Honda Odyssey. And one of the things that's always struck me about this generation Honda Odyssey is its avant-garde styling. And that really shows up when you look at the rear three-quarter view in that roof line. You've got some origami shaping. You've got some swoops and some lines that you just don't expect to see. And it, it really just sets it apart visually from almost anything it competes against. An expected staple with any modern minivan are that these side doors, both right and left, are power operated. You can do that with the key fob, as well as buttons on the inside in a number of locations. Also power operated is the rear hatch. Again, key fob, buttons inside. Also a sensor underneath the bumper where you can wave your foot if your arms are full. Makes it a lot easier when you're grocery shopping. If you look at the rear, a few new trim changes at the back, new taillights, some gloss black trim, just a few little tweaks to make it more contemporary. The interior of the Honda Odyssey got a few updates for 2021 and really they had to do with finishes. Now on the dash, a nice high gloss black, piano black as they call it in the industry, along with a metal looking sort of finish on some of the trim and a number of other feature updates. But to take a step back for a moment, this is an interior that is very well executed. It's very well designed. It has been, and I've said that before in reviews, the seats are heated and cooled in the Elite leather seats. They have a nice accent piping on them and they're extremely comfortable. Honda makes some very good chairs. I've always liked them. Power adjustable, of course, for the driver and I've got memory settings. This is a great seating position. Visibility is good. As I sit here and hold on to the steering wheel, I see that I've got paddle shifters for the 10-speed automatic transmission. And ahead of me is a fully digital instrument cluster, very well executed, very easy to read, and I can customize and put a number of different pieces of information in front of me that I like to see. The center stack, very simple. Honda is sort of really into that simple, put everything in one spot sort of design ethos. One of the things that they've done is the push button gear selector, not my favorite. I prefer to have something a little bit more intuitive that's a mechanical gear selector, but there it is. It is simple and it does free up some space for a number of other things, that being storage. The center console design is very simple. There's a lower area for purses, backpacks, gear, food, whatever you might have on a road trip, cup holders right here, a wireless phone charger in the center, and then a roll top that allows you to get into the deep storage at the bottom, which is pretty big. You can probably put six to eight water bottles down inside of there. As I sit in the second row, this has captain's chairs in this particular model, and I'm pleasantly surprised by not only the seating position, but the room that I have back here. These seats are both fully adjustable in a lot of ways. They have what they call the magic slide feature, which allows you to slide them sideways, either or or both you can put them in the center you can put them both on one side you can put one in the center if you've got a child seat you want to be able to reach back and get right to there's just so many different ways to do this and the benefits you get out of that is it enables you to have a pass through in the center or be able to get into the third row via one of the sides 
The third row surprisingly has a pretty good amount of space and real adults can sit back there. It's high enough, there's enough leg room. It's not something that's made for just for children. Very impressed with that. Those seats do fold down in a number of ways, but most importantly, flat into the floor, which gives you a nice flat cargo area. And when you do remove these second row captain's chairs, you can actually use this thing like a cargo van. But in the real world, when all the seats are upright and in their place, that rear cargo area does have a nice deep well for groceries or for luggage or for whatever you might be taking on your road trips. I find that there's a lot of amenities back here. In the Elite, I've got pull-up window shades, not only on the second row, but the third row has them as well. In this, I've got the rear seat entertainment system, and that comes with wireless headphones, one on either side. Cup holders down in the center at the rear of the center console with a lot of different ports for charging and for using the media for that entertainment system. When it comes to scoring this interior, the thing I really have to say is that Honda has been known for building some of the best interiors in the car business, no matter what the cost. And here again, I am pleasantly surprised by the level of fit and finish, the switchgear quality, the practicality, the design, the appeal, the comfort, the living with it. Everything just really hits on all cylinders. This is an interior that gets five out of five stars. The infotainment system, a lot going on here, more than I can probably talk about. One of the great things that they've done for this in the past few years is they've added a manual volume knob, which replaced the old sort of slider, touch sensitive thing that almost everybody in the world complained about. And now they fixed that. Now the next thing they need to do is put a tuning knob here because you still have to press buttons and slide around and do touch sensitive things to do something as simple as tune a station. Outside of that, this is a very good infotainment system. Navigation, all of the feature content is very good. One of the cool features this has is it has a seat reminder in the back that's tied to the cabin watch camera system. And basically what happens is if it senses anything going on back there, in this case, they've got a shirt. When you shut the vehicle off, it lights that camera up and it chimes. You get a prompt on the instrument cluster as well as a visible cue up on the screen that tells you, shows you, that you need to look at that rear seat and make sure you're not leaving something back there. And in this world, that would be a kid, right? So a nice feature to have. Other vehicles have had the rear seat reminder before, but now we've got the extra added bit of a camera image. Very cool. And that cabin watch is very cool as well, so that you can watch what's going on in that back seat, whether they're adults or whether they're kids. This also has a rear seat entertainment system, a fold down screen with a Blu-ray player up front, if you look at that, you can see that there are also a number of different ways that you can put media on this screen. It's got a lot of features that packs a lot of stuff in there for the money. Visibility is the one thing that I would complain about with this infotainment system because the way it's designed, you do get some sun glare and some reflections that make it hard to see the screen at certain points of the day. But otherwise, this is a very good system. Four and a half out of five stars. All right, now it's time to go for a drive. And the first question I always like to ask is, how does it go? Not bad. Not bad at all. Now, having been a minivan customer before, I know that zero to 60 acceleration isn't necessarily at the top of the list of what most people shopping for one are looking for. But what I do know is the drivability and having power and an overall, well, a cooperative powertrain is very important, especially if you're gonna be taking long road trips, trips up into the mountains. You want something that's got enough power. You want a powertrain that's livable because you don't want to always be fighting with it, especially when you've got this loaded with family, gear, whatever. So what do we have under the hood here? We've got a 3.5 liter single overhead cam V6. This is a Honda engine that's been around for quite some time. This year, 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, and it comes with a 10-speed automatic transmission. The other thing it comes with is idle start-stop. That's to save fuel, and so what happens when you come to a stop, it'll shut the engine off. When you let off the brake pedal, it starts to back up pretty quick, and off you go. Not one of my favorite systems because in the summertime when the air conditioner is on, 
uh, it shuts the air conditioner off and you'll be sitting there at a stoplight with that stale gym sock air. So a uh, little demerit it gets for having that. Now there is an off button for it, but it defaults on every time you start the car. Very annoying, but at least they put the off button right next to the start button right here. Now driving around in traffic, I find that this powertrain actually works very well. It has a system to save fuel in addition to the auto start stop where it can deactivate certain cylinders when you don't need that extra power like at coast or at certain highway speeds. But driving around town, I find this transmission, even though it does have 10 gears, tends to be very good at finding one when you ask for it. And of course, delivering immediate power when you do the same. It's a pretty refined engine. It's not the most technologically advanced V6 out there right now, but it's very reliable. It's something that's worked very well for Honda over the years. Now, fuel economy, this is rated at 19 MPG city, 28 MPG highway, and 22 MPG combined. I've had the auto start stop turned off almost my entire week with it because I don't like that. Thus, my fuel economy has suffered slightly. I ended up with about 20 MPG combined. So if you're able to tolerate that, you might do a little bit better. Overall though, this is a powertrain that scores very well in refinement, drivability, and all the metrics that I try to look at when we're scoring. Four and a half out of five stars. When it comes to ride and drive, the Honda Odyssey is on a chassis that again has been around for a while. It has served Honda very well. It offers a nice quiet ride. With the 19 inch wheels, I do find that the ride has a bit more of a, an edge to it because we've got lower profile tires and therefore it has a little bit more of a harshness over bumps, speed bumps, things like that. But it also offers sharpness, which is something you don't expect in a minivan. Therefore, going around corners, not only on curvy roads, but around town tends to be a little bit more responsive than you might expect. That's a plus. On the negative side, there does tend to be a little bit of noise once in a while when you hit certain types of bumps from the suspension. Overall though, very well done, very well sorted in the handling department. I give chassis four and a half out of five stars. So the last thing I'd like to talk about is value. Very important if you're spending 50 grand on a minivan, right? Is it, does it have value? Well, competitiveness is very big, I think. We've only got two other competitors to speak of. That would be the Chrysler Pacifica and the Toyota Sienna. And when I look at things like this, I'm looking at quality. I'm looking at what am I getting for my money. And one of the nice things about Honda is that when you pick a trim grade, you pretty much get it that way. There aren't stacks of options or packages you can put on in addition to what you get when you choose Elite or any of the other trim grades. And I like that sort of one price strategy, unlike say Chrysler, where you pick one and then you can stack on a bajillion different things and change the price around. Much easier to compare this to other vehicles when you know what you're getting for the money right off the bat. So when you pick one off the lot, that's the way it's going to be. You don't have to worry about whether it's got this, that, or the other on it. So I put value very high for that reason. You're going to spend the money for this because they don't typically, they don't typically negotiate on these too much. But nonetheless, I put value at five out of five stars. Very rare for me to do that. I think, I think this is a good value and it is the top selling minivan. It has been for the past decade. There's a reason for that. It's a good value. So when you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're at four and a half stars for the review. Very good. So there you go. If you like the video you just saw, see my latest one, or better yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel right down there. Either way, stay tuned.